So the tool that we're gonna talk about today is the dial caliper. I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple different types of calipers out there, but the one I'm gonna focus on is the dial caliper. We're gonna talk about why you would use this. So a lot of times what you do when you're using this is you're checking the manufacturer that they're putting out what they say they're putting out. So lots of times quality control people will use these. Um, I like to use them to check when I order electronic components or different types of parts to make sure they're really coming in spec. Another way we can use these is to reverse engineer something. So let's say I have a part, I wanna reverse engineer it, I can take dimensions off of that part. And another thing I like to use this for is checking the size of bearings and screws and bolts and things of that nature that I might not know what they are. All right, so I wanna show you how to use one of these, how to measure one of these, and I'm gonna tell you one thing that most people don't know about the dial caliper. All right, so before we get into the bulk of this video, I wanna show you real quick how to take a measurement with a dial caliper in case that's all you really care about. After that, I'm gonna talk about why you would choose a dial caliper in the first place and why I like them so much and just about everything else you possibly wanna know about dial calipers. So real quick, before you get started, you wanna make note what your dial caliper's in. This one's in inches. So each one of these tick marks on the dial is 0 0.001 inches or one thou. Your scale on the bottom here is in inches noted right there. So I'm going to open up the jaws of my caliper. I'm going to just measure this twice real quick. I'm going to make sure that's on there real good. I'm going to go ahead and carefully lock that measurement in so that as I move those calipers away, I can take a reading off the measurement. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is read off the main scale. You have zero inches, one inch, two inch. So you have at least two inches. And then each one of those tick marks in between the inch tick marks is 0.1 or a tenth of an inch or 100 thou. So I have two inches, 0.123. So I'm at 2.3 inches. And then I'm gonna add whatever I read on the dial. So right now I'm at, uh, I have at least 50, 55, 59 thou or 0.059 inches. So altogether, that's 2.359 inches. And that's how you take a reading off a dial caliper. Uh, the more you do it, the quicker you get. All right, so let's get into the bulk of the video. Okay, let's start out with why you would use this dial caliper in the first place. I mean, you could choose a lot of different tools to take a measurement. You could choose a ruler, machinist rule, a digital caliper, or a vernier caliper. There's a bunch of different options. You could use a tape measure. Well, let's just start off with why you might use calipers in general in the first place. Like, why don't you just use a rule? Well, even a machinist rule only goes down to around 1 50th of an inch or 0 0.02 inches. Okay, so that's the limit of the resolution that you're gonna get with a steel rule. So with the dial calipers, you can get a resolution of around 0 0.0005 or half thou. So you get much more resolution with this, um, but there's also some geometrical uh, advantages because of the jaws that you're using. Um, you have different points of which to take measurements and you can measure things that you might not be able to measure with a rule just because of the geometry of what you're trying to measure. Uh, an example might be something like a bearing. A bearing is pretty hard to measure with a rule because you're trying to measure something that's completely spherical uh, on a you know two-dimensional measurement tool. Whereas with the calipers, you can use the jaws to clamp down on the diameter of the sphere, and you can even move them back and forth to figure out the largest value and get that correct diameter. So there's just geometrical limitations with rules. There's also, uh, it just doesn't measure to as fine a resolution. Now, now why would you choose the dial caliper over these other two? Uh, the reality is these other two will do the job in probably most instances, no problem. Uh, to me, I just prefer the dial caliper for a couple different reasons. Um, as far as cost goes, typically, um, this is gonna be the cheapest one, the vernier caliper. The vernier caliper is, uh, pretty affordable. Um, and, and in the back in the day, this kind of used to be a bigger deal, but nowadays you can get a dial caliper for 25 bucks. 
Uh, you can definitely get a digital caliper for $15. Uh, you know, if you get a $25 dial caliper, it's not going to be the best. You certainly aren't going to get this Minatoyu for $25, but you can get dial calipers for pretty affordable. So I, I just don't see the cost savings of the Vernier caliper uh, as that valuable. Um, obviously, the, the biggest downfall of the Vernier caliper is, hey, you have to take this reading off of a smaller uh the smaller scale and a lot of people find that difficult slow um, no matter who you are it is time consuming the biggest advantage of these things is they're so darn reliable um, there isn't a way to change the set point because the set point rarely changes um, with you'll see with the dial and with a digital caliper there's a way to zero the device but these things unless you really abuse these things you're not gonna uh, knock out the zero point so you know, do I think you should buy these or use these in general? I would avoid them if you can. So that brings us to digital versus dial. Well, I like the dial better and I'll tell you why. Um, the main issue with digital calipers is the battery. I mean, that's the thing that annoys everyone. You go to these things, you go pull them out of your drawer and it's like never 99% of the time these things are out of battery especially if you buy some of the cheaper digital calipers out there. These things suck battery dry. Whereas, you know, if you get a nicer digital caliper like this Metatoyo, uh, these things actually do last pretty long. The, you know, this thing just sips battery. Um, so it's a little bit better. Um, and the best, if you're gonna go digital, that I absolutely recommend, I don't have one of these, but get a solar powered digital caliper. That way you don't have to worry about battery life, battery drain, um, or else you're gonna be replacing batteries all the time. Still, still, even if you had a solar powered one, um, which is in my opinion, the way to go, I still like the dial caliper and I'm gonna show you why. All right, so one of the first reasons why I really love dial caliper is that this is a completely mechanical tool. It uses gears, which is amazing that we can get that fine of a measurement using this type of mechanical tool. And as a mechanical engineer, I just really appreciate that. Uh, then one of the next things that I love about the dial caliper is the dial face itself. So if you're looking at a digital readout, you're just seeing a number. Whereas with the dial, you actually get to see the needle move in a certain direction. And the only thing I can compare it to is when you're in a car. A lot of new cars nowadays will just give you a digital readout of your speed, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. And the dial face tells you so much more, just like the radio gauge in your car will tell you more information if you're speeding up or slowing down just by a quick glance at the needle of that dial face. So that's another reason that I think it's that dial calipers are superior to things like digital calipers. Um, and one of the last reasons why I love the dial caliper is it gives you a little sense of where you are when you're looking at the number. So for instance, if I look at the dial right now, it's just shy of the 10 thou mark. And that tells me that if I'm gonna err on one side of 10 thou, I'm gonna try to err on uh, manufacturing or creating or building or machining, whatever I'm doing, just below that 10 thou mark. Okay, now, one thing you do have to pay attention to when you're using your calipers is, is it zeroing? So you close the jaws, you close these external jaws, and you come in and you say, okay, is it lining up exactly with zero? In this case, it is, way to go. But if it's not, one of the first things you wanna do is maybe get out a microfiber cloth or something and just clean these caliper blades because a lot of times dust it only takes a little piece of dust to throw throw this off you know we're looking at measuring a thou or 0 0.001 of an inch so it's pretty small it doesn't take much to throw that off so you want to make sure that's that's correct if it's not you need to loosen this screw down here and you can move the dial accordingly until it's zeroed make sure that's zero nice and correct okay if you're not sure if your calipers are working properly, another thing you can do is you can use something called a gauge block and you can check. These are extremely accurate. So this says one inch. It's one inch 
to the point zero 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 it place roughly depending on the, the grade of the block okay so I'm coming in here you got to be a little careful you don't measure sideways so you kind of swing that back and forth a bit you can see we're coming in at exactly one inch so my calipers are pretty accurate right now okay so I'm going to show you the four different places you're actually taking a measurement from right now on this caliper now you may only think there's three places that are taking measurements but there's actually a fourth that a lot of people don't know about so one of the first places you're taking a measurement from is between the two external jaws and this is the one people use the most right the next place you're taking a measurement from is between these two locations the internal jaws and there is the depth gauge over here where you're taking another measurement from and the fourth place you're taking a measurement from is if you were to extend out the top here portion of this internal jaw in the very very end of your caliper you're actually taking a fourth measurement from that location and that location is used if you have to place your caliper right up against something like maybe you can't get the jaws physically around the part because of the geometry of the part so the only way to get to take the measurement is to put the caliper head flush against the wall of the part or whatever you're trying to measure and then measuring from the the very end of the caliper to that part of the caliper uh, the internal caliper blade so there's four different parts one two three four that you take a measurement with with your dial calipers and you can use any of them they're all they all are equivalent right now so if you want to know a little bit more about the anatomy of the dial caliper right it's made up of a bunch of different little terms that we have for each little part of the dial caliper right we've already mentioned the external jaws the internal jaws the lock screw which locks this dial head in place we have the dial itself we have the bezel nut which allows us to zero out the dial and we have the scale in the beam where i can see the main scale with the tick marks and graduations there we have the depth rod pointed to over here if you're ever wondering what divisions are on your dial head Remember, every dial head will tell you what the divisions are. In this case, 0 0.001 inches. Okay, so every dial should tell you what each tick mark or division or graduation is in the dial. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure this video is way too long. And I, if you stuck around this long, that's awesome. Uh, you probably like dial calipers almost as much as me or your AFK. But either way... Make sure you subscribe so you can check out more of our content. We're going to keep coming up with new things every week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Have a good one.